What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with the weekly reset for the 23rd of April 2024, and this takes us into week 3 of the Into the Light update. So, firstly, we will be getting some new rewards this week in the form of Brave weapons, but additionally, Bungie have a new patch which is changing the drop rates of some of the Brave Arsenal weapons, and improving rewards in the Onslaught game mode. So we'll talk about that and any other patch notes today, and then we'll cover all of the vendors, new weekly quests, key activity rewards, farmable exotics, lost sectors, and the primary loot drops for the week. So plenty to touch on in the video today, guys, as always. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. But without further delay, let's get into it. And initially, it's worth saying that this week, the featured brave weapons which we'll be unlocking include Forbearance and the Hammerhead. So as we've seen in previous weeks, we'll get a new quest at our site. And as always, it's worth picking that up, getting it completed, and unlocking those weapons into the general loot pool. Then we can go ahead and farm with attunement. So that's a positive, and there are some changes to Onslaught this week, which we'll touch on in a moment, but for the Whisper mission, we should be getting the final exotic upgrade for the weapon, and as always, the quest for that will be kicked off at Eris. So let us know if you'll be focusing on either of those this week. Next up though for today, we have had a hotfix for the game, so... In terms of patch notes right here, for Raids and Dungeons, for Warlord's Ruin, they fixed an issue where solo players were unable to complete Warlord's Ruin due to blocked doors at the Imprisoned puzzle after the first encounter is completed. Also for King's Fall, they fixed an issue where two players could receive the Unstable Light debuff at the same time during the Golgoroth encounter. In addition to that though, we get the changes for Onslaught, and Bungie say we've adjusted reward drops to ensure a guaranteed weapon drop within a 50 wave run, and an additional bonus weapon drop upon completion of wave 50 in any difficulty. In addition to that though, they fixed an issue where the portal out of the Pyramid Arena would occasionally not spawn, another issue where the activity would end after looking at the default reward chest in wave 50 instead of waiting for all chests to be looted, and then they fixed an issue where players could access unintended locations in the Pyramid Arena, and one where players could duplicate batteries using class abilities, plus a crash caused by environmental objects, and finally, an issue where repeatable onslaught bounties would take up two quest slots and only allow players to abandon one of them. Then for gameplay and investment, they updated the reticle bounce behavior on the Brave Recluse to more closely match the behavior of the original weapon, and in general, they fixed an issue where a gilded cage was missing spikes on one side of the barrel, another where jumping and interacting with the vendor would not display the vendor screen correctly, and then, one where picking up a new light kit would override existing abilities for that subclass in saved loadouts, and finally, an issue where the Vanguard node was locked for new light players after completing the tower tutorials. So that does it for the patch notes today guys, give us your thoughts below, and enjoy farming Onslaught with hopefully a few more weapon drops. Up next though, let's get on to the Eververse inventory for the week right here. As always, don't forget to pick up your free bundle of Bright Dust, but for the Bright Dust stuff featured on the front page for Eververse, we've got the Sparrow Getaway, which is 3,250 Bright Dust. Rather curious looking thing right there. On top of that though, uh, we've got the Recluse Ornament, Necrosis. I'm not sure uh, why it says I don't own Recluse, because I definitely do, but this is an older Recluse ornament right here available in the store this week. Kind of cool voiced ornament for 700 Bright Dust. And then we've got the Vitreous Entrance Transmat Effect, uh, which is 450 Bright Dust. We'll have a quick preview of that one right there. Also, though, the Gloam Strife available this week for the front page shaders, and this is 300 Bright Dust as always. On top of that, though, we do have the Meditator shader on the front page as well. But over to the main Bright Dust section right here, we've got the Trap Setting Exotic Emote, so let's have a quick preview of that one right there. As always, I forget the prices, that one's 3,250 Bright Dust. And then we've got Helmets uh, from the Future Facing Universal Ornament set this week for 1,200 Bright Dust. There's also the Firebreak Shell Exotic Ghost, which is 2,850 Bright Dust. And then uh, the Synchrotron Advancer, I had to carefully read that one, for 2,000 Bright Dust right there, so a little preview of the trail on that. But also there is the Pinballer Exotic Sparrow available here, which is a rather curious looking thing. Kind of reminds me of the arcades on Neomuna ever so slightly. That one is 2,500 Bright Dust. And then the Business End Ornament for Sweet Business, uh, which is one from this season available this week. So that's cool. Maybe something to grab. Actually, quite a plain ornament uh, really, but a different colour scheme nonetheless. Give us your thoughts about that for 1250 Bright Dust. Then there is the Secure Projection Ghost Projection here, which is 1500 Bright Dust. But for the second page of Shaders, up first there is Celestial Dome, which is 300 Bright Dust as always. A very silver looking thing. On top of that, the Neopop Wave is available this week, which often comes up in the store. And then there is the Boreal Char available as well, which is quite nice with this armour. 
And finally, the Growing Guilt uh, from back in Season of the Seraph. Once again, all of these are 300 Bright Dust. But finally, there is the Vex Invasion effects Transman effect available right there. That's 450 Bright Dust. And for the same price, we've got the Rasputin Reboot Transman effect, which is certainly cool. And finally, the Ossified Entrance is available this week as well. So give us your thoughts on that Eververse inventory, anything you plan to pick up. And I suppose let's move on. Next up though, let's take a look at Banshee's inventory right here for the moment. And we've got Whispering Slab with Quick Draw and Demolitionist, as well as Cartesian Coordinate with Slideways and Backup Plan. And then True Prophecy has got Overflow, Explosive Payload, as well as Disparity right here, which is Eye of the Storm and Kill Clip. And finally, Code Duello, which has got Field Prep and Chain Reaction. So maybe some useful stuff for some folks right there, but keep in mind the weapons and roles will change throughout the course of the week. Also, for any folks who are interested in the Archie series of quests that I did suggest would be popping up at some point in the very near future, down here uh, near the Annex, near Ada 1, uh, where Archie can normally be found, interestingly, he seems to have actually disappeared and we can investigate the paw prints. So this is something I'm going to look into in just a little bit, but looks like we're probably getting the start of that quest. Some folks told me it wasn't going to happen just yet. I told them it was, and I was correct, I suppose. Let's have a look at Ada 1 uh, right here, though. For the armor, we've got the Tangled Web, or a mixture, sorry, of different items right here that may be interesting for some folks. But for the shaders, we've got Vitrified Duality available first. This is 10,000 Glimmer. There's also New Pacific Sync, the worn variant of that. And finally, War Cult Rain available this week as well. Up next, though, to mention some other rewards this reset. And for the Nightfall this week, we've got Lake of Shadows, and it'll be dropping the Loaded Question Fusion Rifle. This is the final time that Loaded Question will drop before being removed from the loot pool going into the final shape. So if you happen to want to farm one of those out, this is going to be the final week to get it done. Otherwise, though, for rewards, as well as the Whipper mission, Operation Seraph Shield is the featured exotic mission this week. So if you want to pick up Revision Zero or any of the Season of the Seraph legendary stuff, you can farm that inside of the mission. But for the farmable raid and dungeon. Firstly, we've got the Last Wish raid featured, so all of the legendary loot pool, but also the 1000 voices, is completely farmable this week. Otherwise though, the duality dungeon is also featured, and there we can pick up the Heart Shadow, as well as any of the legendary stuff, which again, can be repeat farmed this reset. So good luck if you are hunting down anything there. But finally, we've got the featured Lost Sectors for the week. And as well as the exotics, you can see the primary legendary drops there on the listings as well. And for today, we've got Bunker E15 on Europa, which is dropping exotics exotic arms. April 24th will be Concealed Void dropping exotic chest pieces. Then we move over to Neomuna with Thrillodrome on April 25th, which will be dropping exotic helmets. On the 26th of April though, we get Gilded Precept on Neomuna dropping exotic legs. April 27th will be Scavenger's Den in the EDZ dropping exotic gauntlets. And then we'll see Skydock on April 28th dropping chest pieces. And finally, the Quarry on April 29th, which will be dropping exotic helmets. So good luck if you are hunting down any exotics or things like that. And for today guys, that's what we have to round up in the video. So as always, I hope this one has been useful. And if it has, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. Also, be sure to get subscribed and I can keep you posted with more Destiny content. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in and whatever you get up to, I hope you guys have an awesome day.